Hey everyone, welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. And if you can't tell, the setup is even different this time. Just like last time we were in my office, I know it's kind of fugly. Uh, we are back at our usual spot, and we have some, some new microphones. Oh uh, yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes. Uh, we don't have our chairs here yet, which is why we're still standing, which is why the microphones are a little bit awkward. But once we have our our full setup when we have our chairs and everything, we'll be able to like properly lean over on, on here without like I'm short, so like this is actually awkward for me to lean. That's why I'm kind of holding my mic a little. Uh, but yeah, these are our condenser mics, which are the very first time I've ever worked with condenser mics. So forgive us if the audio isn't perfect, but it should be a lot better than normal since usually it's one of us is louder than the other. Usually me because I'm loud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> usually, but that can be fixed. Uh, so this week we got some pretty cool stuff to talk about. And why don't we start with a little game, a little a little known game called Super Mario Run. So this past week, we got basic confirmation on what the game's going to cost. Uh, they, had, just as a note, before I say the price, they, Nintendo has noted in the past that there will be no DLC with this game, or microtransactions. So keep that in mind when I say this price. Because it's going to be a little off-putting for a mobile game. It's nine ninety nine. Remember, this releases December 15th, exclusively on iPhone devices or iOS devices, coming to Android next year. So you will get to play it next year. Yeah. Um, so what do you think? The, hold on, but before we, before we get into what you think on this, let me kind of explain what's happening with this game. There are three modes in this game. I do not remember what they are off the top of my head, of course. Um, but I know one of the modes, uh, you uh, get to race against other people, try to beat their time. Makes a lot of sense. Makes it competitive. Uh, it has, obviously, the normal mode where you go through stages, just like normal Mario games that have different levels in them. Uh, and then I can't remember what the third mode is. Um, toad something or other. <laughs> I, I don't oh, know. Toad. I think it's the one that allows you because there's an ability in this game to like build your own little castle area, okay. and you can like you earn pieces and you can build it up. Okay. Yada yada yada. Interesting. Um, so if it's anything, apparently, let me backtrack. There's a Rayman game out on phones that apparently is very similar in terms of it being a nonstop scroller, but you tap to jump, and it basically works just like this game. Yeah. Um, and apparently, it's really really good. Um, because Rayman's a platformer, kind of makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so Nintendo's not the first company to do this by a long shot. So the question I have for you is nine ninety nine. What are your thoughts? At first, I was probably like anybody else. Holy crap, that seems really expensive. Especially um, since I, most people play the games for free on yeah, their phones. Right. But seeing as is, you now explained that there are no microtransactions there's nothing else supposedly like that. supposedly that's yeah. what they say right. let's wait six months right 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 but hearing that it actually makes me slightly more comfortable with the price and and i say slightly i mean slightly well what's nice about this is they are going to release um you are going to be able to pl- like a free to try you're going to be able to play a couple stages. Okay, so I don't know if you can play from all three modes, but you're going to play a couple stages for free. Uh, so you are going to get to try it before you drop down 10 bucks. so you can kind of decide, is this a Mario game that's worth $10 to me? Right. Um, now, obviously, it's important to note, most Mario games cost 60 when they come out, so <laughs> for Nintendo, they might think this is some sort of great deal. Um, but again, $9.99 is a, it's not unheard of on the mobile market, but it's very... There aren't very few games that are actually highly profitable and successful at that market. At that price, yeah. Uh, but this is Mario. Yeah. And it's being pushed as a exclusive at launch to, to iOS, so you know it's going to be featured. It's going to be like the number one app that Apple pushes, too. Right, right. Um, crap, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you even excited by this game? Yeah. I mean, I mean you've seen video of it, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm not normally one for, you know, the running games like this, but... Being it's a, Mario. Yeah, it's Mario, exactly. And I think, you know... It's new Super Mario Brothers U on your phone. On your phone. <laughs> no, uh, I think I am excited about it just because the fact that, you know, Mario and Nintendo's kind of branching out a little bit and trying a new new uh, media and... 
hmm, it's going to be tempting to possibly purchase. I can tell you right now I'm purchasing day one. Yeah? <laughs> um, I, I'm more interested in how Nintendo progresses with their mobile games versus necessarily interested in this particular one. Because Nintendo's only internal game they've released is Mitomo, which was free. And yeah, there's microtransactions and mini games and all this stuff. And, and Meteomo is it's okay. It's not really a game. It's more of a social experience. Like you meet other me's and you ask them questions and they're on your friends list. So like you get to learn more. Like oh, you learn people's favorite color and their favorite food and what they did this past weekend. Like it, it's it's almost like one of those Facebook personality test things. It's really weird. Um, but you kind of it kind of lost its charm on me after a while and. That's fine as like their first get into get into the mobile market game, but this is their first like legit game that they are putting out. Pokemon Go isn't Nintendo, well, right? Yeah. Um, the Pokemon Shuffle, like last year, was technically like the first. I think that was the first game that has a Nintendo IP to appear on a phone. Even then, that's not Nintendo that did that. Right. Uh, so this is their first foray into the actual game sphere, and we do know they have like a Fire Emblem game coming and an Animal Crossing game coming to phone, so this could give us maybe an idea of the quality that those games are going to be at, not necessarily that they'll be this type of game. Uh, I just kind of want to buy it. out of it, It's cheap enough for me that I can kind of look at it and gauge what Nintendo is doing. Do, do they actually understand this mobile market, or are they literally just copying what everyone else is doing? Right. And just hoping that we slap our IP on it and people are going to buy it. Yep, just because it says Nintendo across it. As I said, there's a game similar yeah. to this from Rayman. Yeah. Like, is this basically that game with that Mario? Game. Yeah, just reskinned. Yeah. Um, because Nintendo prides itself in innovation. They kept saying, we're going to come to the market in unexpected ways. And it is unexpected for them to release a Mario game at $9 or nine ninety nine. Yeah. And, you know, no DLC, no microtransactions. That's pretty unique. Um but assuming they stick to that. Right. Um, I think, again, going back to the price, I think I would have been a lot more comfortable with it at about 5 bucks. See, I think I think they should have... See, it depends. Like, Part of me says it should be a $0.99 cent game, but then it's going to have DLC and microtransactions. Right. It's, it's going to happen. Right. Uh, because that's not enough profit per user to really justify it unless suddenly they get... You know, a hundred million users. Right. Which, yeah. You know, they just start talking it's... about beating Pokemon Go. And that's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. Especially if Pokemon Go is free. So right. yeah, there's that. You know, four ninety nine I think is a more digestible price point. I even think if they would have went as low as two ninety nine, um, and just offered like micro microtransactions in the form of like skin. Yeah. Like you can yeah. have you know instead of playing with Mario, you can play with Luigi, but it's really the exact same game. Or Toad, or yeah, like Yoshi like that kind of or, stuff. Like yeah. it, it, where the gameplay is essentially the same. You don't even gain any new abilities, but people are going to be interested. Be like, oh, I can play as Yoshi, even though yeah. it's still all the same yeah. animations and everything. Maybe a couple little new features, like with Yoshi. Oh, like or when you yeah. beat when you beat a stage, he sticks on his tongue. Or yeah. like yeah, like you know. I, I, but again, we'll see. Yeah, if this is a game. That I can sink, you know, five, six, seven, eight hours into to one hundred percent it. And by the way, a game like this, you don't really one hundred percent. You can one hundred percent one of the modes, but like you'll always be able to compete against your right. Game. Yeah, and yeah. they'll probably always release constant updates to like upgrade your castle or whatever you can build yeah. in it. Um, yeah. But you know, the one mode, like I'm assuming, this is the main mode, the first mode you play, where you have stages. Yeah, that's going to be able to be beaten. Um, so if I can get like five, six, seven hours out of it, nine ninety nine isn't that bad for that kind of experience, especially yeah. when yeah. you think of some AAA games, you could drop sixty bucks and only get fifteen hours, right? Which granted, it might yeah. be a fantastic fifteen hours and totally worth it, but you know if you can get a third of that for for nine ninety nine, that's that's not too bad as long as I'm having fun. Yeah, of course. And again, I guess with the price point too, is you got to remember this is again Nintendo's first venture into this, so they may learn a harsh lesson at that. This thing may be overpriced, but you never know. And the thing is, it's not that they can't ever drop the price. Right. <laughs> I guarantee you they'll have some unhappy people that bought the beginning, but... Oh, don't worry, they'll give you free coins, because then they're going to add the DLC and microphone tech. <laughs> um, that's why, that's right. why everyone is saying, just wait, because there might be microtransactions if this thing doesn't sell very well. Right. Um, but it's Mario. It's going to probably sell decently well based on the, just the Mario brand. Uh, so I guess we'll see. Well, great time killer for kids. Parents, download it and hand, hand it off to your kid. There you go. So this is a really weird transition. 
Because there is another Mario game coming out for the Switch. Yeah. But we're not going to talk about that. No. I just want to transition to the Switch. Your topic. That's right, go folks. Surprise, surprise. <sighs> we are talking about that Switch again because the internet can't stop finding out apparently new rumor information about it. Take it away because I have I've not read these rumors myself. And this is the first time you're really reading them. Yeah, I so, so let's go. It's really long. It's about the specs. Half or shred these. This is this is coming from so. a post on Reddit, which yep. has not been deleted by the mods. Um, yep. And I know it, it's from somebody who apparently works at Foxconn. Yep, Foxconn. Who makes like they're the manufacturers of Nintendo's products. So uh, take it away. What do we got? Here? So taking it away. Uh, yes, yes. I'm talking into the mic. <laughs> calm your calm yourself. No. <laughs> uh, so, a guy with the nickname of FJ8885 claims to be working at uh, Foxconn. Uh, he said that you know they're again they're making the the switch. So he's oh okay. Uh, he's just talking about the different things. So like the dock, there's really no advanced technology going into the dock. It seems pretty cheap, light, uh, feels really plasticky. No extra power, uh, just to, uh, out, uh, for outputs. It's got one USB three, one HDMI. Uh, on the sides, it's got two USB twos, uh, and there's no fan on the dock as well, apparently. Which I guess if there's nothing really running in the dock, it really doesn't need one. Uh, but there's a hole on the back of the dock oh, for the console vent. Makes sense. Uh, and then the console. Looking at the screen, it looks like it's a 1080p uh, uh, multi-touch screen. Uh, uh, according to specs that can show up on the software test, can see uh, the five times or five by uh, 0.8 centimeter heat sink from the vent on the 0.8 some centimeter width. Oh Jesus! There's a lot of different random stuff on here. <laughs> here, I'll, I'll, I'll take it here. Yeah, okay. So you got the 12 centimeter L-shaped heat pipe. It looks quite shabby, but heat performance is really good. Not too hot from the console. The software demo testing is millions of fish and running for almost eight days. There's no single frame drops during that time. Wow. That's, that's crazy. That's well, it also depends on, like, how, like, okay. The NES probably could have handled millions of little little dots that yeah, we call fish. True, I mean, true, how, true. How, yeah. how's the fidelity of those fish? Right. Um, the screen is not very bright, and it's speculated you can't see clear from outdoor. Ooh. Um, Again, could also be something that you know, might be brightness settings. Um, the 3DS has brightening settings, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does, yeah. actually. Yep. Upper, upper does. left on the menu. Yep. Um, so, I, chances are there's brightness settings. And th- if this particular person just didn't see that or didn't get the mess with that in the OS. Um, looking at the core, it's a 10 by 10 core. Uh, from the test, the CPU is 1785 megahertz. The GPU is 921 megahertz. And EMC is 1600 megahertz. Speculated the CPU is an ARM A73 Pascal that is much more powerful than the X1. When tested, it only shows an ARM V8 structure, hence the speculation. It's confirmed that it's USB C charging. Uh, speculated the core is made by TSMC, but it doesn't have its logo on it. It's looking really good, running thousands of fish software demo to make sure those. The system is running fine. I saw orange and blue controller. Heating fan noise is not loud. Power adapter is external. There is a 4G console version. That's some new info right there. Uh, Confirmed can be charged while playing. I'm assuming they mean when you take it off the dock. You can still charge it if you want. Um, Battery is 4,310 milliamps. Uh, It's about 3.7 3.7 hours, it looks like, or it takes 3.7 hours to charge. Not really sure. Uh, it's been tested over 11,750 1, minutes. Uh, it's all running stably and smoothly, not a single frame drop using the software demo, again, which is fish. Uh, speculated that it has uh, two RAM sticks equal to 4 gigabytes. It's about 300 grams in weight. Thought it was 1,000 grams or something, and that was pretty, and I was actually pretty surprised it was only 300 grams. Um, and that's excluding the Joy-Con controllers. Obviously, those would have a little extra weight. Um, they used the digital scale to weigh it. The Joy-Cons, what do we got here for the Joy-Cons? Uh, 
there's two shoulder buttons on each Joy-Con, which we already know, uh, and they they are called SL and SR. Uh, it's very complex inside, apart from the motherboard and the console screen. Joy-Con is the most valuable in the whole system. The battery inside the Joy-Con, so that confirms they have their own batteries, okay. uh, are about five centimeters by two centimeters by a half centimeter thick. Uh, very light, about 50 grams. Um, and apparently the battery is 525 milliamps per Joy-Con. Right, why don't you read the next part? Ah, production. Uh, it's being produced at about uh, 2,100 uh, units per day in one line. The whole factory can produce, uh, let's see, is that 20,000 per day. Very good quality control. Uh, don't worry about the build quality. They ship to Japan and Australia. Hmm. Dev kit version, a much powerful producing uh, 2000X units for now. The core is one times bigger than the one above. Uh, again, this is talking about the dev unit, so there's some differences from the dev unit to the mass production unit. Uh, it looks like 12 by 18, uh, 2 extra RAM. This version has 8 gigabytes apparently uh, with uh, Wi Fi, one HDMI, one mini display port. Uh, one Ethernet, two unidentified sockets, three X network LED indicator. Looks much more complex than the normal version. Uh, there's seven extra unidentified storage, different socket. Not sure if this is the dev kit that was crossed out. So, mm -hmm. um, it, oh, it's, he confirmed that this is a dev kit. And Nintendo was coming to exam the dev kit today. No dock for this version for now, but it can be plugged into the TV, hence the display port. Um, yep. So it looks like they they did not give docs to some of the dev kits. They just put a display port on it. Which, Which is, for, again, for dev purposes, who, who, that, that's, yeah, that's fine. Not a big deal. Um, speculated provided the core is only include a GPU. It would be even more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro. Okay, again, this is about, also talking about the dev kit. Mm -hmm. um, the screen is the same size as the normal one. It's much more powerful, but also much heavier. Not feeling great in the hand. Speculated for 4K gaming. Haven't seen such a huge core. And it's a 16 nanometer by 102 millimeters to, I don't know what that means. I'm guessing squared. Yeah, squared. Uh, main core, there is no battery inside this version. So it's a plug-in only version. Um, source, this is the discussion link. We'll put that down in the description for you guys. Uh, all right. Uh, is there any more to this rumor? Uh, no, he's just disclaiming that he's not the guy who actually... <laughs> said this. He's, yeah. He does speak a little Mandarin, whoever, he, she, whoever wrote this. Uh, but they're pretty vague and not always sure what they're talking about. So, again, this is all rumors and should be taken with a grain of salt. So, Obviously a huge grain of salt. Just like any rumor we post, even if it's from like Emily Rogers uh, or Laura Kate Dale, um, anyone that even has an excellent track record, this is big stuff that Nintendo would ha I mean, you figure would be able to keep this under wraps. So, um, <laughs> Again, though, uh, everyone's trying to get information about this bad boy. Yeah. Um, so we've seen specs before. Th these specs seem to suggest something even more. Um, what do you think? First, uh, before we get to the dev unit, because I think the most interesting stuff's in that dev unit. Yeah, definitely. Um, what do you think of the the main things? First off, uh, we had a report earlier. Th this is where the Joy-Con bit kind of gets me. Why? You know, people are like, why were the Joy-Cons in their own batteries? Right? Because like, if you disconnect them. They obviously have to have power. Right. So that makes yeah. sense to have their own battery. But there's a rumor uh, from the GameStop CEO who uh, admitted he got to play the Switch a few weeks ago. Um, he kind of hinted that they have motion control. Mm -hmm. Right. So what what kind of motion control that is, whether it's just gyroscope, whether you need to have a sensor bar, I don't, we don't, yeah. we don't know. Right. Um, is it possible now that Skyward Sword HD could happen now because that's exclusively motion controls? Possibly. Beats me. But uh, let's just stick right with these rumors. What, what, what are you thinking? What, what does this sound like to you? It, you know, it, it doesn't sound terrible. So, I mean, the, the 4 gigs of RAM, which is not terrible by any means. No. Uh, so. The only thing that concerns me about the 4 gigs is if dev units have 8. Yeah. That's, cut that in half. Yeah, right. Why is it cut in half? That's the question. You know, oh, well, obviously to make it cheaper and lighter. Well, right, but, but I mean, you just hope that one of these devs don't forget that you know their units got well, eight gigs of RAM and <laughs> they here's the thing I, I take out it. of this. I mean, this is the first time we've heard that it's 1080p. We've heard multi-touch before, 
all the other rumors for this have been 720p for the screen. Right. So yeah. if it's full 1080p, um, you know, th- that's great. I mean, this is it looks like it's 1080p, so it doesn't sound like they actually literally this person like tested the screen to see if it's 1080p. So it very much yeah. still could be 720p. Like this 1080p doesn't deconfirm 720p because the guy it doesn't sound like he actually tested it to see if it right. was true yeah. 1080p. Yeah. He said Definitely. it looks like it's 1080p. And let me tell you, 720p on a 6.2 inch screen can fool a lot of people into thinking it's a higher resolution yeah. than it really is. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, what I kind of get out of this is one, this kind of confirms it's like it, it's more powerful than an X1, which kind of suggests it's an X2, um, that it's Pascal. Uh, that it's using the latest, most powerful ARM processor on the market. Yep. That I mean, that kind of falls in line with some old rumors from like last year or something, where people said, "Oh, it's it's exciting. It's using literally the latest chips." Well, that would be a latest chip, yeah. as would an X2 that doesn't even exist on the market yet. Right. So it is p- potential that this is literally using the latest chips for what this thing's aiming for. Yeah. So maybe maybe those old rumors were so off about it being. Everyone thought they were exaggerating. Oh, using the latest chips. Maybe it's not exaggeration here. Yeah. Um, again, though, like, I don't even mind the production. Like, I know 2,100 units sounds like not much. 20,000 units a day, 20, a day doesn't yeah. sound like much. But again, they're making this well in advance. Well, plus this is probably only one of a couple of factories that are making Yeah, and this, yeah, again, this is only one factory. They, could, they might be able to up it to multiple factories. Um, it's still... You know, twenty thousand a day. What is that? Twenty, forty, sixty, you know, hundred thousand, roughly a week in a work week. Yeah. You know, and they probably won't run it seven days a week because it's China. So. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, they might <laughs> run seven days a week because this is China. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you know, really, yeah. hundred forty thousand units. Yeah. You know, um, and if they're looking to get have you know a few million ready at launch, you know, obviously they need to be making them now. It is interesting that they've already sent some apparently to well, not to Japan. That doesn't surprise yeah. me. To Australia. Australia. Yeah. Um. I know, I was kind of surprised about that. I mean, it's not going to be at retailers. It's going to be like in Nintendo's warehouse somewhere. Yeah. Um, And they'll send it out to retailers when it's time. But uh, I I think what concerns me is the difference between whatever the dev kit is and the one they're manufacturing for retail. Mm -hmm. Because the dev kit has twice the RAM, has apparently 4K. Oh, yeah. And is as powerful as a PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, that's exciting. Yeah. Like... There's a Switch that's a dev kit that is a PlayStation 4 Pro in your pocket. Yeah, right. Granted, it doesn't have a battery, so it's not running on battery power. Yeah. But still, it, it's that's crazy to me. It is. It is. Now, obviously, this is all a rumor. We don't know that this actually exists. We have not heard any person who has a supposed contact with the dev have this particular dev kit unit. Right. But if it exists, it's crazy because clearly Nintendo is not going that route. And yeah. I don't think Nintendo ever planned to go that route because you're talking about a $500, $600 system. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. A premium market, which Nintendo has not really gone after ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've always kind of been pretty consistent with their console prices. I mean, the Wii U is one of their most expensive ones, and even then, it still kind of fell within what the N64 costed, you know, with inflation back in the day. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, So, part of me hates this rumor, because... It's telling me this is what we're making, but this is what somebody has. It, it can be. It yeah. can be a 4K PlayStation 4 Pro. <laughs> right. But it's not. It's not. But yeah. somebody out there has a dev unit that is. Yep. Um, you know, is that somebody, the actual president of Nintendo, who's like, ah. Well, nah. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, I think there's got to be some perks to being president yeah, right, of Nintendo. Yeah. I mean, Reggie fils from he's probably got one already sit, chilling at his home. Oh, he probably does. No, he's probably, no, probably not at his home because someone yeah. might break in. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, at the office, in, in his office, you know, yeah. he's probably just casually going to be in Nintendo Direct and there'll just be one sitting on his office. All, all everyone wants to talk about why, what's up with that Switch on your desk. And he's yeah, like, right. eh, yeah, eh, you know. wants to say 4K on it. Eh. <laughs> why not? I'm, I'm Reggie. I get what I want. <laughs> um, but setting aside the dev kit, which, unfortunately, the dev kit makes me feel disappointed by what is being said about the retail unit. Um, depending on what it's priced, which, again, rumor prices are somewhere between $200 and $300, uh, I'm okay with that. If it has the latest in the mobile technology for ARM processors, yep. if it's using a modified X2, which isn't even on the market yet, yep. um, using the Pascal architecture, which, again, that's what the 10, the 10, the, the basically the 1,000 line 
oh, GPUs uses what my, my 1070 is. That's on the Pascal line. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that's a little weird is the battery. It's a little small. Uh, that battery life is only slightly bigger than most phones yeah. um, for something that's pushing a lot more power than most phones. Yeah. So, again, you're looking at that three-hour battery life rumor. That might be true. And if, yeah, um, if not slightly less. But, uh, again, I'm, I'm okay with that because this is supposed to be a home console on the go. Yeah. How long do I really expect to play a home console on a battery for? True, and true. there's going to be third-party battery expansions. It's oh, gonna, yeah. It's going to exist. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to have one day one that I'm going to charge separately. And when I pop it up, I'm plopping it on that thing yeah. going, yeah. oh, this thing is Definitely. light. Gosh, I need light when I add my 10,000 milliamp extra battery to it. <laughs> right? That doesn't include – plus you can power it as you go. I got all those phone chargers. I'm yeah. only hooking that up and playing. Yeah. Um, so I am excited by this. I am worried uh, if that dev kit is real. Well, um, I'm worried if any of this is real. I'm, I'm, we're getting so many different specs thrown in this now. The only thing right. we can seem to confirm is that everyone agrees it's Pascal. Yep. Everyone agrees it's not a stock X1, mm-hmm. so it's a modified, which you know Nvidia said themselves. So th- that's not really a surprise. So it might be right. an X2. No one knows for sure if yeah, it's an X2. One and a half. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's some yeah. some sort of custom modified thing. Uh, we know that it is an ARM processor. Whether or not it's the very latest cutting edge one or a generation back, we don't know because there's conflicting reports, and some of that might be because of dev units. There could be older dev units that have older the older yeah. processor in. Yeah. Just like there was a report from Eurogamer that the dev units had an X1 in it, and now Nvidia's come out and said, "Yeah, but it's a modified version of whatever." So it's not going to be a stock X1. Um, and now we got more info for the Joy Cons. They were obviously going to have batteries. Yep. Uh, whether or not those batteries are long enough life for a controller, I, I don't know because I'm trying to think. Uh, I do not know off the top of my head what the milliamp hours were for the uh, Pro Controller. See, oh, the yeah. Pro, the Wii U Pro Controller has an 80 hour battery life. Oof. So, like, it's insane. It is the uh, no one knows like what magic voodoo magic <laughs> did that Sony and Microsoft cannot for some reason replicate because like the controller is 50 bucks and you charge it through your console and you're done for 80 hours you basically have to charge it like once a month it's insane that is crazy. um i don't know why other people don't do that and i know you know maybe it's because of rumble or something it doesn't matter like yeah. that is insane even if you cut that in half to 40 hours yeah, that is insane. still insane um so i would love to see that the joy con batteries are actually kind of like that where they kind of last a long time um, but we'll see again if they have motion so there, could, there could be a lot of things going on in there and he did say uh it is the most comp you know it is the most complex part of the console um, and next to the actual like screen um, the actual like system with the GPU like like these things are expensive uh, which tells me if they do sell extra ones at retail or like al- alternative versions it might not be like these little $10 controllers you can be dropping 30 40 bucks a pop to get a new Joy-Con yeah. or a custom Joy-Con yeah. outside of a the third-party versions, which there'll be third-party versions which don't have batteries and run just off your console and drain the battery even more because <laughs> people want that. They want cheap yep. five-dollar controllers. Yep. Mad cats, get at yeah. it. Oh god, no. <laughs> Actually, it'll probably be PDP because Nintendo has a partnership with PDP. Yeah. Um, which most PDP controllers aren't very good. Well, but that, that's what that's what you get getting third-party control. Some third-party controllers are really good, but like. Those cheap ones. There's a reason they're cheap. <laughs> I got I got a rock candy controller over there for my Xbox One. Let me tell you, it does not feel good. No, it's it not doesn't. very responsive, it, and that's a directly corded one. So like, you figured yeah. it should have less latency than the wireless ones. Yeah, but it has a little more. It's a, it's a little straight. And then it, I mean, it feels fine. It's cheap. It's twenty bucks. I yeah. mean, compared to sixty, you can't really complain too much. Oh, exactly. Yeah. What you're getting. It, it works. Exactly. And it always works. I don't need batteries, so it works for what you're using. It for. Yeah. Um. So. Do you have any final thoughts on this? Because I'm, I'm kind of torn. I, I yeah. almost wish that dev kit stuff wasn't. Good. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, to know that there's something out there that is almost again might be out there. Might Rumors, be, yeah, true, salt, true. True. trucks true of it, that. trucks of it, <laughs> ocean. Just drain the ocean, leave the salt. <laughs> uh, yeah, to know that there's possibly something that's even better out there than what is going to be for the public. Kind of, kind of sad, but at the same point in time, I get it. Uh, dev kits are normally a little bit more spruced up, at least from what I know of. Uh, you know, it 
that's about all I have to say on it. It it sounds definitely interesting, but so we're recording this on Black Friday. That we are. The night of Black Friday. We're yes. done. If we went shopping, it's over with. I didn't really do it much. I, went, I stopped on at yeah. Walmart, but it really wasn't because of Black Friday. In fact, the things I bought weren't even on sale, so it literally had nothing to do with Black Way Friday. Uh, yeah. I, I only went there originally to get like some new bottles for my son, and suddenly Yulia's like, oh, you need to get like a, like a ball pit or whatever for Ollie. <laughs> I'm like, for Christmas? Yeah. No, for today. I'm like, I, you don't buy your kids toys Christmas? this close to Christmas, yeah, right. but... If you know anything about my girlfriend, you don't say no. No, I know. So, <laughs> my son has a ball pit, and he oh, got to play geez. with it today. Um, he also got one of those little pop-up tunnel things that you can crawl it, through, it, because she said he needs something to crawl through. Yeah, well... And so, he's got two Finding Dory-themed things going yeah, on. Well, At least I kept it themed. You know... It costs like 70 bucks, thanks so, for the only thing not on sale today at Walmart. Yeah, it, don't worry, you can always just repackage it and give it to him again. <laughs> he won't know the difference. <laughs> yeah, he, he, well, he won't, but Aiden will. <laughs> well, there's that, but, you know... Santa's not real because I got... I already got this. Yeah, right. No, why don't you go look again, son? No, no. Why don't you look? <laughs> Santa's real, kids. Go go, go, che- go check in your room quick. Oh, yeah. look, it's not there. Whoops. Someone stole it. Don't worry. Santa's yeah, right. got you covered. Santa got you covered. Uh, so, so Black Friday. <laughs> back to the Black Friday thing. You discovered something kind of interesting today about Black Friday. Yeah. yeah. Um, in specific to that special $99 3DS. That, uh, I'm sorry. New Nintendo 3DS, which is important to note because that's the one that has the better specs and everything. Okay. Oh, so it's it's, it's still a, it's not a new 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 3DS. It's well, it's just a brand a, new. No. Okay. Okay. So what it is is they released an exclusive edition of the new Nintendo 3DS, kind of like you know like that Mar- that Galaxy edition yeah, one. Yeah. Except this is a special Mario one that was black okay. and white. It just came out so only a, for Black Friday. Um, limited quantities, and it yeah. was ninety nine dollars, which is a big deal because any other new Nintendo 3DS system you got two hundred. Right. Yeah. Now you can get a normal 3DS for like 150 or so, but yeah. the new Nintendo 3DS and the new Nintendo 3DS XL basically sell for 200 bucks. Okay. Right. So it's just basically reskin, but well, they have the... faceplates. Uh, yeah. The new Nintendo yeah. 3DS has faceplates. The okay. XL version does not. But okay. Yeah. So it comes with these exclusive faceplates, and it's ninety nine dollars, which is yeah. the cheapest. Yeah. It's ever yeah, been. Definitely. Period. And yeah. it's a limited, so like it's not going to stay at ninety nine. I mean, a year from now it might be, but right now, yeah, it's cheapest no. ever been. Yep. So, what's the drama behind this? What's because the drama behind this? There's always drama with Black Friday sales. Black Friday sales. Well, Amazon kind of snap food on this one. Uh, apparently, they decided to put up for a period of about an hour for pre-sale or pre-order on the 23rd. Two days before it was actually supposed to go on sale. Now, did they tell anybody they were doing this? No. Not that I not that I know of. Uh, this is according to the report by Polygon, yep, by the way. Polygon, yep. I was actually just going to get to that, but thank you. Uh, then, on top of that, the 3D, 3DS then officially went on sale the 24th, which I think, from what I'm supposed to be hearing, is, yep, one day before it's supposed to go on sale. Are you sure? Because I did see some of the new 3DSs going up on sale at certain places on Thanksgiving, because there's that 6 okay. p.m. Yeah, the, yeah sale okay, start. so, but... I don't know. It just says I'm here according to the thing beforehand, two days before on the 23rd. So. Yeah, that, that is, that's a little strange. Okay. So yeah, either way, but most people were left in the dark. Yeah. That okay. It, it, does say, it does say it was officially supposed to go on sale on the 24th. So okay. it was. So Thanksgiving at you know whatever time okay. six p.m. Yep. or whatever it was supposed yep. to go on sale. Okay. So that might have been a typo with the two days before it's supposed to go on sale. But either way, yep. uh, uh, okay. So why most of the customers were left in the dark when this happened and that when it basically went on sale a day earlier so a lot of these customers are just absolutely mad that when they went on when it's supposed to be on sale they're already sold out now here's my thing with this because as a Zelda fan as a guy who's editor-in-chief of Zelda Informer, I know full well that when the there was back when Majora's Mask 3D was coming out there was, um, in fact, you know what? Keep, keep going on about the story, but I'm gonna go grab this. To I, I got something to show why people were angry. Just <laughs> well, uh, for this, most of the people that you know, uh, they go on to say basically like one one of the customers is uh, like so many other. I'm disappointed with the random release and was penalized for actually thinking I could buy one when it was when I was supposed to. 
that was one of their customers. Uh, another disappointed customer wrote that he was excited to see a, a version of the 3DS that he could actually get for his son at a price he could afford. But when he logged onto the site and realized it was sold out and it had already been since the day before, he added that he he added though that of course there's multiple versions of it from thirty part third party accounts, but for double the price. All right, so that's obviously scalpers and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Like that's Definitely, the thing, yep. and double the price is actually what the normal ones cost. So it's actually not even a terrible deal. But this bad boy right here, mm -hmm. the Majora's Mask Edition, Special Edition 3DS, which I don't actually own anymore, but I kept the box because I'm always, yeah, you know, it, it's just like a memory of mine, and plus I get to cry and look at it and be like, why, why? Because I. I buy things I don't have money and then I have to sell them. Um, so just, just bad financials here. Um, but it was worth it for the box. So when this bad boy came out, it was literally sold out within seconds of being available to pre-order. So my question to the people that are upset, because, yeah, it, it did kind of suck that it was open for pre-orders two days earlier without any notice for like an hour. It was obviously an accident since it was only for an hour. Yeah. Even if that didn't happen, this thing was going to be sold out within 30 minutes, thirty seconds to a minute. It was going to happen. A $99 new Nintendo 3DS, heavily advertised by Nintendo, heavily advertised by all of the people that are doing the Black Friday deals for it. Um, I know I went to Walmart later in the day, but when I asked the guy about uh, the 3DS thing, he said literally they had people waiting in line for it, and they already had all the copies sold out before they even started the sale. Mm -hmm. So... To the people upset that, oh my god, I couldn't get this right away. It probably would have been sold out and you wouldn't have been able to get it anyways. But the fact that, I, I think the biggest complaint is that it was sold out before it even went on sale. Technically. Quote Maybe. Unquote. Possibly. It, that's what it, because they, can't, they, they wouldn't know. Like The people who couldn't get it couldn't possibly know if there wasn't somebody who literally refreshed it that second and there was some available and got it and it sold out right away. True. They literally would not know because they were not on one of those yeah. people. So they're yeah. just assuming nobody could pre-order it or nobody could buy it at that time when they wouldn't know. That's true. Because the people who did pre-order it or did buy it right at that time aren't going to talk about it. They're happy. They got it. They're good. They're right. Yeah. Yeah. And That's what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. It's kind of like it, it, when you have these kind of deals, deals here's a few things with, with this kind of deal, especially if you're online shopping. Yeah. One, do not ever rely on a single retailer when you're online shopping right. for Definitely, flash yeah. sales like this. Yep. So you shouldn't have just been checking Amazon. Right. You should have been checking Target. You should have been checking Walmart. Um, I know within two minutes after the sale went live, they still had units available on Walmart.com. They were sold out within five. You could have easily, oh, it's sold out in here. Let me check Walmart.com. Boom, yeah. got one. Could have yeah. got it. Could have did it. Um, so it, there's Best Buy. There's so many online retailers that were selling this thing. I'm an avid Amazon shopper. I have Amazon Prime. Yeah. I have to renew it soon. I love it. I save lots of money with it. I love even the occasional free movie I watch with it, even though I watch more Hulu and Netflix than yeah. that. Still, it's nice to have. Um, I do not really care that this thing sold out on Amazon. One, obviously I own a new Nintendo 3DS, so it's not a big right. deal to yeah. me. But beyond that, it, it's one of those things where if you're an online shopper, you know you can't ever stick to a single retail. Right. So I understand being upset. You should be rightfully upset if you're an Amazon consumer that it was on sale two days earlier when it should not have been. Yeah, and more than likely completely by accident. Yeah, it was probably but. someone that, someone just accidentally clicked the wrong button on the back end and opened it and realized it when they noticed, uh, why is this thing sold out? Yeah, right. When it's not for sale yet, yeah, that's yeah, weird. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and I understand being upset with scalpers, but <laughs> scalpers exist. Oh, yeah, is it, they're going to get it. Go to eBay. I yeah. mean, you don't even have to look at Amazon reseller. Go to eBay. It's probably selling for two hundred there too. Oh, definitely. Um, the NES Classic Edition was selling for two hundred on there, and that only cost sixty bucks. So I, it's you can't do anything about scalpers. It's just the we are in a free economy where that kind of stuff's allowed. So there's nothing we can do about that. Right. Um, at least in the United States. I don't yeah. know how other countries handle right. handle that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, it, it, and really, it's the same story with this guy. This this came with the special uh, collector's edition of Majora's Mask 3D. Um, which I'm really mad because one of his things broke off the top. That actually upset me. It happened like a week ago. But, uh, yeah, this guy, this, this little skull kid, for those who are listening to the audio version, um, he was also sold out like within minutes. Like, yeah. this happens. It does. So, 
I understand being upset on Amazon, but you're you're not going to tell Amazon to give people money back and make it available again. Oh, right. almost, yeah, yeah, no. At this point, it's like just say your complaint and move on, kind of move on with your day. Well, and that, and that might be exactly what it is, but you know, people are going to report on it because it's a, it is and it isn't a big deal. See, I, I'm one of those people that just I, I don't think it's. I've been at this online shopping thing for so much. It's like. You got to check multiple retailers. But at the same point in time, there are people out there that are idiots. Are well, there's there's. <laughs> Sorry, that, I don't want to call you an idiot if you're upset about this. As I said, you have the right to be upset about yeah. this. Just like anyone who's upset that Breath of the Wild might not be coming at launch of the Switch, you have a right to be yeah, upset about exactly. that. Because even though that's not like an, it was never confirmed to be there at launch, it never guaranteed. It's, it's fair to say that Nintendo has led you to believe that's the case. Because yeah. they just had a whole E3 dedicated to it. They let off the Nintendo Switch announcement with Breath of the Wild. Yep. So it's understandable why you would think that. This, on the other hand, it sucks it was available two days earlier and you didn't know about it. But at the same point, I just... Well, I, one one of the one of the users said that, you know, he, it, it, the thing was is he had signed up for an email alert saying... Basically, whenever this is available, let me know. Yeah. He never got one, um, even on the pre-order. Yeah. So he never he, he never even received an email for that. So he was super mad about that, too. And here's another thing. Check back on Cyber Monday. Yeah, I'm sure there will be... There's probably going to be more. like a restock of these for Cyber... And, oh. and I know Nintendo said Black Friday only. They're not stupid. They know Cyber Monday's a thing. Oh, yeah. They're going to they're gonna have probably have a second wave of these on yeah. Cyber Monday. And especially with... if. This isn't the. I mean, this might not be the only snafu. There might be other ones out there that. We oh, just there's seen. Oh, there's always snafu. This is just what we know that happened yeah. with Nintendo stuff. Yep. Um. So yeah. Oh, I know of another snafu. This isn't Nintendo related. There was a site. It was either I think it was yesterday. They had uh, Civilization Six, which just came out a couple months ago. Uh, Civilization Six. <laughs> Did your computer just die? No, it's. Oh, sleeping. Just or, slow. I went to no. I went to screensaver. <laughs> um. So, they Civilization Six was apparently going on sale at this one site. It was a bug on their end for twelve dollars. It's a sixty dollar game that just came out like a month ago. Yeah. It's not going to be for twelve bucks. You might be able to get it for fifty five. Yep. But you're not going to get it for no, for twelve dollars. Well, they had it for twelve dollars, and a whole bunch of people got it, sold it out, blah yep. blah, blah blah. Well, the retailer came back today. And sent emails to all those people saying, we are refunding your money. It was a mistake. You are not going to get it. Even if they already sent out the key, they are avoiding all the keys. Ooh. Now, that... They, no, no. Someone went through the legal the legal means of it. They can legally do it. Oh, no. I, I understand that. But, but it still really is... sucks for people that already have the code, redeemed it, and already have the game, and then all of a sudden they go to log on their game and, oh, invalid. Yeah. Here's your 12 bucks back. Yeah. I think it was 12 It might have been 13 but it was, it was right around there. Um... So this is the you want to talk about complaining. This is even worse. Oh, definitely. Uh, Because this isn't a consumer's fault that you guys screwed up your pricing. Yeah. Um, you know, and I understand that the retailer would lose out a ton of money because who knows how many digital copies they sold of that. I mean, it could be up in the thousands, hundreds of thousands of copies they sold. Yeah. Um, but again, they legally can say it was a mistake and refund your money and void out those those codes apparently. It sucks them it knowing seems, they can do that, but it seems a little shady business practice. But you know, it's it's their right. Yeah, it, I don't know the terms of service of this. Well, of right, this right. Either, but so. then again, I mean, it's it's almost kind of like going to the grocery store or, or going to any store and having them having it mislabeled. Well, ninety nine percent of the time, that store is going to give it to you for that price because they. But they don't it. have to. Yeah, no, they I know. Technically, don't have to give it to you for that price. They could just tell you it's mislabeled. Yeah. And they can go grab the label and show you, especially when it's mislabeled. Sometimes it's labeled, but they put the wrong label in the wrong place. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the same point, a lot of stores will, like I, at Gordy's. You know, a week ago, our local grocery store, they mislabeled some soda for a dollar. I came up to the register, all smug, took a picture of it. They gave it to me for a dollar. Yeah. Um, but they don't have to actually do that. And no. I knew it wasn't actually a dollar. It was actually on sale for like two thirty-eight or something. Yeah. So it was still a good deal either way. But it, it was one of those. I. I you know, I was going to be smug and see if I can get away with it, yeah. and, and and of course they you know, they they were nice enough and let that let that go through. Even though I think they could tell, I knew, like I knew who takes a picture of it. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, you know it's not yeah. supposed to be a dollar. Yeah, but uh, especially for a twelve pack of a name brand soda, that that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's one of those things that I, I guess 
it didn't happen to me, so it's easier for me to say I'm not upset. But yeah. even like when it did, because I had a hard time getting my hands on one of these. Yeah. Um, I was, you know, I was only able to do it because our local GameStop isn't that popular for Zelda. So I literally got the last one from there. Yeah. Like the day after. Yeah. Because um, they did reserve some of these exclusive for in retail. Um, yeah. So, and that's another thing for people upset. Like, there's probably plenty of these at retail. Yeah, um, probably no, not anymore. But, but. Well, no, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I I understand them being upset. I just feel like you need to be a smarter online shopper. And, again, some of these people might be, not to be offending to any older people out there, but older and not as experienced with online shopping as some of us younger kids. So I, I get that, but this is Black Friday. <laughs> you don't come into Black Friday to online shop, which, by the way, is really weird because Cyber Monday is supposed to be the online day. But, again, they, this is – companies want to make money. They sale. I mean, the Black Friday kind of goes all weekend now. Yeah, um, pretty much. Like, like I know there's some some stores in our area that have, like, doorbuster deals every day this weekend. Yep. Um, which, <sighs> I didn't have the money today, but I could have got the very last – a new Samsung 65 inch 4K with HDR for 300. It, it was the very last one. I don't know how. Basically, it was like hidden in this back. Like they forgot to bring it out to the pallet. Yeah. And I saw it, and then I asked the guy, "Hey, is that the one on the sale there?" He was over and look. He's like, "Yeah, did you want it?" I'm like, "You should have the said money. yes, and then wandered around with it after <laughs> you called me." <laughs> it's for called you to come by. It. I, yeah. It wasn't a curve, but that's okay. Like it has HDR. It's technically yeah. slightly better than the one I have. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Which, by the way, the is, is broken. My my nice sixty five inch four K. Yeah. Destroyed. <laughs> it, it's okay. It, it's it's all covered by warranty. Samsung is coming to take care of it. Um. So yeah, that I, I guess that's just a really interesting story. You're like on the side that yeah. you understand why people are upset. Oh, or, definitely. Yeah. And I'm just like. Psh- no, I can definitely see both ways. No, I, I can't. I, I'm not a both way kind of guy, man. I don't swing both ways. <laughs> you don't okay? swing both ways. Um, so, is there anything else we wanted to, to cover this week? Uh, well, do you have another topic? Quick? No, I don't. Okay. Um, one thing I want to bring up is we are obviously working towards making this podcast better all the time. You know, we now we've got our separate audio recordings that we can mash together. Um, we're going to be having chairs soon. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever improve the lighting, but we are going to get a new stand for the camera. All the stuff, everything's going to slowly start morphing in, into this looking like a more and more like legit thing happening. Um, and part of that means that I want to bring our audience more into what we do. And over at the Zelda Forward podcast, we do like fan topics. And I kind of want to bring that over into this podcast since in this podcast yeah. we have the ability to talk about a much more broader spectrum. Yeah. Because all the fan topics at Zelda Informer, no surprise, tend to deal with Zelda. Yeah. And that's lovely. In fact, if you want to talk about Zelda on this, we can talk about yeah. Zelda. It's okay. Uh, but I kind of I kind of want to extend this out to you guys. I, I don't want to just do fan topics. I also want to do things like games. You have a game you want us to play. Yeah. Like you, like you know, we did a bet earlier in one of our early shows, which still haven't been paid for yet. Yeah, well, but uh, hey, I gotta I, find I a time. Mine, dang it! I gotta fi- find when Darren can can make it on and give me <laughs> give me my ten second victory poem. Um, but again, like if you have a, a certain bet you want us to do, if you have like a game where we have, or you give us like a list of games, and you know we have to we have to say you know hate it, love it, buy it, dump it, or whatever. Yeah, you know, like of games whatever. that need to come out in the future. Uh, that, you know, whether we're excited, whether we know about it, whether we think it's going to be a hit. You know, I, I've seen other podcasts do games like this, and I don't really want to come up with the games myself because I, I have a lot to do. It's yeah, podcast, definitely. Yeah. I got Nintendo Prime, I got Zelda yep. former Facebook pages. I got a lot to do. But if our fans want to submit these kind of games to us for us to do and come up with it for us, we will gladly run it. We'll, we'll put stakes on the line. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You know, whether it's like, Sorry, I get the. You're going hunting tomorrow. I get to draw a penis on your face. <laughs> Enjoy the hunt. Yeah. Um, Until I have to go to work that yeah, night. Yeah. Well, you know, it, yeah. it'll be Crayola. <laughs> it'll be washable. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, I won't make it too many. It won't be permanent marker. You just have to wear it while you hunt. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, dear. You'll, you'll probably sweat it off yeah, anyway. Right. <laughs> hey, dear. Look. <laughs> Here, dear. Look. Distract you. Yeah. Um. No. So just like silly things like that. We, I, I like doing bets, um, but I also like not necessarily always having to come up with the ideas because I feel like there's a lot more originality if the collective viewer listener base. Oh yeah, it, it, it's like 
Yeah, like fun. play this game or like yeah, talk about this topic. Like yeah, you keep talking about the Switch, but hey, we really want you to keep talking about like Secret Amount is your favorite game. Like why? You know, yeah. is there you love a link to the past. Like why? You know, you love I don't know why. <laughs> why? Why do you guys like playing Madden so much when it's not even on Nintendo consoles anymore? Like yeah, you yeah. know. It, and again, yeah. it doesn't have to be specific to Nintendo consoles either. No, it doesn't have to. We aren't willing to talk about anything you want. As it's an example, since we're on the the Black Friday thing, yep, I'll bring up just a, a little bit off topic, a little off <laughs> off Nintendo, <laughs> because well, it's kind of Nintendo, but it's not. So my my parents call today because they they go Black Friday shopping every year. Yep. Yeah, and they don't go like local here. Like they go over to Minnesota. They hit up the big stores trying yeah. to get the huge deals. Yeah. And they usually get a few of them every year. They're they're, they're like up at like three o'clock and they're out. They're out. Yeah. Um. So, my mom called me at like eight. So they'd already been shopping for a couple hours, and she's just, and she's just like, "Hey, your dad wants to buy himself a new video game system, like not just a game on PC." Because the the problem with my dad is that he's got like some nice computers to game on, but they're work. Yeah. Computers. Yep. So he like he can't really game on it. He doesn't yeah. feel comfortable doing that. Cause right. The game ends up yep. blue screening the thing. He can lose a lot of stuff. Yep. So he's not going to risk that. So he wants to play on a console. I mean. I always told my dad, you can just build yourself a separate computer to game on, but yeah, right, yeah. whatever. My dad doesn't want to do yeah. um, so my And my dad's always like playing on consoles. So the last console they ever bought was a Wii. Yep. Um, and my dad played some Call of Duty on it, yada, yep. yada. But my mom's like, so what console should he get uh, that's going to have all the games and isn't going to be outdated? And I'm like, well, what do you mean by outdated? I'm like, well, we know about the Wii U, but... Yeah. It doesn't have the games your dad wants to play. I'm like, right. well, okay. Yeah. I'm like, mom, and it yeah. was outdated when it released. So. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Technically, it was just as good as the current gen, or a little bit better when it released, but it was going to be outdated within a year, and it was. Yeah. Uh, so she's like, you know, what, what, what should we get? What, what would your dad enjoy? I'm like, well, it's either an Xbox One or a PlayStation Four. I own an Xbox One S. Love it, mm-hmm. but it is not the best on the market. No. You, if my if dad wants the best that's going to last, the PlayStation 4 Pro just came out. It has 4K gaming. It does not support 4K Ultra Blu-ray. My Xbox One S does, but yep. my dad's buying it for gaming, and he already has a 4K Ultra Blu-ray yeah. player, so he doesn't yeah. really need that aspect. Yeah. Um, but it does do 4K gaming, and it is going to. My dad has a 4K TV. I'm aware he does. So, in the you know, if he wants the latest and greatest, that's the latest and greatest. Uh, there is going to be an Xbox Scorpio coming out a year from now. But it might cost six hundred, eight hundred. Dad's probably not going to be interested in spending that kind of no, money. No, probably not. Uh, but so part of me felt get bad because here my parents are for probably the first time ever I, that I can even think of in my life asking me advice on what video game console they should buy. Yeah, and I could not look at my parents and say buy a Nintendo. Right. Yeah. My, I mean, my parents bought a Wii without any prodding of me. Yeah, they don't own a 3ds, but they don't care about handheld gaming. Right. Yeah. No. So like, I could say, well, just wait. The Switch is coming out. My dad's not going to care about the Switch. No. No. It's. I mean, I, I shouldn't say he's not going to care. I think he might find it cool because my dad did play Game Boy and stuff. Uh, so I think my dad would like the Switch, but I can't guarantee that what he wants to play is going to be on the Switch. Right. He wants to play the Call of Duties. You know, the Madden, the Maddens, yeah. the stuff like that isn't traditionally on Nintendo's consoles. Right. At least not anymore. <laughs> uh, so. Is it wrong of me to feel bad that I had to tell my... Like, I, I don't... I'm not into the big console wars where, like, oh, I own Xbox One, so Sony sucks. Or, yeah, like, no. oh, Nintendo rules and everyone else drools. Like, I, <laughs> that, that's not really how I how I game. You know, I, I have a gaming PC. I have an Xbox One S. And that seems counterproductive because they basically get the same games. Yeah. Especially definitely. now that all Xbox One games come to PC. Yeah. So it's like, it does feel redundant to have both. But at the same point, the whole reason I have it is because of Madden. And Madden doesn't well, come to PC. That's basically the reason I own an Xbox One S. Plus, now, the big reason I own the Xbox One S is because it plays 4K with the Rays, which the PlayStation 4 right. Pro, for some reason, does not. Yeah, yeah. It's really... That is, yeah, that I don't is understand nice. why Sony made that decision to yeah. cut a couple bucks off the price. Like, Yeah, no. Especially when it plays sh- the games. Yeah, it, it, it's a little yeah. weird. But I, I, I think... Am, with, I, am I bad? Like, I'm a... Nintendo, Nintendo yeah. Prime, like right, yeah. This is what I do for a living, and here I had to tell my dad, not Nintendo, go Sony. It, in a way, it, no, you're definitely not bad for it because you're just telling the truth. It right now, Nintendo's a little bit behind. 
when it comes out. A little bit. Okay, sorry. It's been like a, a decade. A lot of it. <laughs> but, you know, it, with the Switch coming out, it may change things. But again, you can't guarantee that anything that he wants to play is on it. So, for what he... And I can't guarantee that the Switch is not going to outclass the PlayStation 4 Pro. Right. So, like, it's not... The Switch isn't going to make that console feel outdated. Right. That was the kind of the big thing. When my dad yeah. said, if I buy a PlayStation 4, it's going to be outdated. Don't buy the PlayStation 4, buy the PlayStation 4 Pro. And I'm telling you, Dad... If you're trying to find a deal, there is no deal for PlayStation 4 Pro. It just came out two weeks ago. But Which, again, the PlayStation is... 4, you can get for 250 but I'm telling you, Dad, if you don't want to feel outdated, you need to get the Pro. Right. Don't get just the standard yeah. PlayStation 4. Yeah. Especially since I know he's going to be using it on a 4K TV. Right. But, at this, you know, yeah, so you... I, like, I, I, part of me feels bad. Like, I got off the phone and I was like, I'm looking down. I'm, I'm, at the time, I was uh, editing an editorial for that someone else wrote for Nintendo Prime about third-party games that you would like to see come to the Switch. Uh, that editorial is, is live. You can go take a look at it. I'll put a link in the description. And I'm like, I just got off the phone with my parents and I told them to buy the thing I don't have. Yep. I just suggested to them something that I don't own. Now, I, I keep up on gaming a lot more. That's why they came to me. I keep up yeah, on gaming. I, it's my job. But yeah. my job's Nintendo, not everyone else. I just kind of follow everyone else in regards to Nintendo. Yeah. Um, Oh, man, I, I I still feel guilty. Yeah, that I couldn't be like, Dad, go get that Wii. Yeah, Dad, definitely. Just wait, get get that Switch. Yeah, definitely. It's gonna switch up your lifestyle. Yeah, like it, again, I because I, I know it's... my dad likes likes a lot of the games I like that are the reason I own an Xbox One. But yeah, you know, and, and like, well, why don't you just tell him Xbox One S because it does have the 4K because it doesn't have the 4K gaming, true 4K gaming. It does yeah. not have it. Um, yeah. You know, that's the bottom line. I, I told him the pro because it does not have the true 4K game. That's basically it. Yeah. And I know, and I know that my dad, when he was playing, uh, when he used to play Madden on PC before they got rid of it, the controller he used was very similar to the DualShock controller. Right. Yep. It was it was a controller made by yep. Logitech. It was basically the same thing. Yeah. Um. So I know he's going to be very familiar with that interface. Yep. Um. But ah oh, man. No, I wouldn't. I like my dad's going to play like some serious hardcore games. Like he's not. Yeah. He's not looking to play like Cooking Mama. But. Again, it, you can't feel bad for something that's not on Nintendo. If they don't have it to offer it, it you can't you can't force something on so, somebody that why do I feel don't want it? Mainly because you cover Nintendo and you've kind of been, in a way, a Nintendo fanboy, yeah, as they call it. Y- yes, it, your whole basically your whole life. So that's probably why you're feeling bad. But at the same point in time, you can't feel bad for something that in a way Nintendo kind of set themselves up for. Well, Nintendo's been driving third parties away since the N64. Right. Whenever that Sony and Super Nintendo deal fell apart and the PlayStation came out, uh, Nintendo kind of fell behind. They didn't go to discs, um, which it turns out, maybe they should have never went to discs because now they're yeah. going back to cartridges. Yeah, so like right. maybe cartridges were should have stayed anyway. I, I know there's expensive things. Like I, I get it. Um, but the way that Nintendo... Oh, I don't know. If they didn't go to this, the Wii probably wouldn't have been as big as it was. So Yeah. But it, it's still... I, I think this is why I feel bad. I feel bad that I can't look at my parents in the face who bought the Wii, who enjoyed the Wii, who mm-hmm. might have played Call of Duty on the Wii. Um, that I can't look at them in the face and be like, you need to wait and get the Switch. I think that's what I feel. I don't feel bad. I can't tell the Wii. There's really no point to invest in the Wii right, right now, especially now. unless you only want to play one game on it, and that one game is Breath of the Wild, and you happen to get like a hundred dollar like Wii you use somewhere. Yeah, um, and that's all you want to play for like the next year. That's fine. Go do that. Yeah. Like there are people that are like that. They will play that game over and over again for years. Mm-hmm. Um, over and over again. That might take you that long to just play the one. Just play it once. <laughs> um, but I think part of me feels bad that I just couldn't look at my parents and be like, look, you need to get a Switch. You need to wait. It's coming out in March. You need to buy a Switch. It will have what you want on it. It'll do what you want to do, and you'll be able to take it with you, which is something you can't do with anything else. Right. Which is not something you might use often, but Dad, you go on a lot of business trips. Yeah. The fact that you could take your games with you on your business trips over to the UK, yeah. over to Definitely. Australia, like to Texas, like you can not be able to bring the PlayStation 4 Pro with you, but you can bring this. Like that's to me is something that I think would appeal to my dad. But I can't just I couldn't, I couldn't look look my parents in the face and be like, well, in this case on the phone and be like, it's going to have the games you want. I, yeah, exactly. And again, a I lot mean, of this. Yeah, the Wii U got Black Ops 2, and it was great. But 
then it just all fizzled out. A lot of this, I think, falls on Nintendo for not really saying anything about the Switch a- at all. Well, January 12th. Well, yeah, uh, but that's but see, still... It's, yeah, see, th- this comes back to the should they have had this big January 12th event before the holidays so people could make purchasing decisions like this. Yeah. Because if Nintendo came out and said, look, we're getting Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which is this year's version of Call of Duty, plus the Modern Warfare remake, yep. and we guarantee that we're getting next year's version of Call of Duty and next year's, you know, Titanfall or whatever, whatever games are coming out, I'd be like, those are the games my dad wants. Boom, dad, wait, get a Switch. Yep, exactly. Like, this is the one thing where I'm like, if I knew enough about the Switch, I could be like, look, yeah, you should wait. Yeah. Ex- you, it's not worth yeah. buying now, because three exactly. months from now, you're going to be able to get a product that's going to be more useful for your lifestyle. Exactly, yep. Um, so, that, maybe that's why I, it sucks. Yeah. I just don't know enough. I am, you know, I, I openly admit, I'm a Nintendo fanboy. I argue with people all the time yeah. that are always down on Nintendo on why they shouldn't be. Um, and that's because I personally enjoy it. <laughs> I'm a bit of a weird gamer in that a lot of gamers pigeonhole what they like. I like RPGs, adventure games, and yep. FPS. Yep. Okay, well, I like the whole spectrum of games. Oh, yeah, definitely. There isn't, like, yeah, I I, I like sports games. Like, yep. I prefer sports games, but yep. I love adventure games. Yep. Obviously, Zelda. I love RPGs when I have time to play them. Yep. You know, Pokemon is an example. If, yep. I get, if I get Sun or Moon, like, or if I get Stars, if that's a yep. thing, like, I'm getting that because I like RPGs. Yeah, I like Pokemon, but I like it because it's an RPG. Yep. Um, you know, I'm not into the mystery dungeons and all the other games. Pokemon Snap was fun. We need a Pokemon Snap too, um, <laughs> right? Especially with the Switch, take it out in the real world. Like, oh, that'd be anyways. that'd be cool. Or like make Pokemon Go have a Snap feature. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, and that's something else we can it, talk about in a moment. Um, yeah, there there is something I want to talk about with Pokemon Go. Okay, but I, I guess I, I, don't I think know. I think I think you know just enough to know that it the concept is going to fit your dad's lifestyle so well. But at the same point in time, you can't guarantee any of the games that he wants to play is on it because you don't know enough about it. You're, you're in a massively gray area. Thanks, Nintendo. Yeah, again. Nintendo, Nintendo, I wanted to tell my parents straight up they should buy a Switch. I didn't even mention to them that the Switch exists. Yeah. It wasn't worth mentioning right now. And I'm upset by that. Yeah. Um... So moving on, the last thing I wanted to talk about today, this is something that I, I glanced at earlier, so forgive me if I don't have the details 100% correct. Uh, there is a rumor out for a future Pokemon Go update that is going to have, like, they're adding, like, 100 new Pokemon to the game. No surprise. they got to add new Pokemon over time. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um, like, I know they just recently released a Ditto, so, like, now you can go out and catch Ditto, which is cool. Like, yeah. Ditto's one of my favorite Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, but... I mean, any Pokemon that could become any other Pokemon is a pretty sweet Pokemon, right. I tell you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but the Pokemon Go update, the thing that interests me the most, and there's a whole bunch of little details that are coming um, out of the woodworks for this supposed future update. Again, just a rumor. Uh, and by the way, I saw this rumor on Nintendo Everything. Shout out to Brian, who, who runs that place. Awesome job. Uh, they are adding player versus player, finally. Ah, that's what the rumor says. And that's what everybody wants. Well, right, yeah. Um, I've been playing Pokemon Go, got all these Pokemon, now what? Yeah. I caught some, did some gyms, like what? Congratulations. Player versus player. That's I, what people yeah. do Pokemon. Yep. Um, so, like, that's huge. It sounds like, there were some other details in the update. I don't remember them clear enough to, to kind of, yeah. I don't want to speculate on, on things right now that I'm not 100% sure on. But if this update is true, it sounds like Pokemon Go is finally becoming what everyone wanted it to be day one. Right. Oh, and, and I know they released some patches that also fixed some of the tracking stuff finally, because that was like a big thing that people hated when they ripped out the tracking because it was, was kind of broken. Um, so they, they kind of, yeah. yeah. He's opening it right now from VentureBeat. Um, again, I saw this on Nintendo Everything, VentureBeat. I'm sure it's on a whole bunch of sites. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he, so he's going he's gonna to load up that and see what the other details were. Uh, but like Pokemon Go, I might actually start playing. No, yeah. I'm only level six. Um, my my daughter keeps begging me to go out and catch Pokemon. I have no desire to because it feels like it's all pointless. Uh, but it's from that. Hmm? No, it's from the. End. Um, so if this is true, they add player battle. They fix the the tracking, which has been a big issue. Um, they start ver- adding more variety to the Pokemon. They add you know some new Pokemon. I'm assuming some from Gen two. Um. Does that make you want to play Pokemon Go as a Pokemon fan? Yeah, definitely. Actually, 
I was just going to say, it. if this is actually true with the player versus player, it definitely might be a, a time for me to download it. And... Let's look like Gen 1. Let's yeah. look like Gen 1. Uh, I don't know what this list is. Um, here are all the creatures expected to be available after the coming update goes live. Uh, when was this posted? Uh, well, a few days ago. Here, let me see if I can pull up the... Today. This was posted today. December 25th, dude. That is, it is today. today. That's right. <laughs> I forgot we're recording on Black Friday. Why am I... Yeah. I'm already thinking, you know, three yeah. days in the future when this podcast comes out. Right. Um, yeah, so just kind of go through, like, what, what else was in this update? I... Um, so it says the update will include 100 new normal and legendary Pokemon player versus player battles, raising your critters like Tamagotchi pets. Ooh. Okay. So you so have to you, feed them. You have to feed them, or maybe something like that, or, or something like walk there. them, yeah. or you know, take care of them, check out them. That, that's yeah. kind of cool. Trading between players. That's going to be huge. Oh, for... trading. That'll be According huge. According to for... an analysis of the Hit Mobile Games code by people associated with Web Scanner Pokemon Verse, if true, that could set Pokemon Go for an explosive comeback during the critical holiday season. Again, this, this update, is supposed so. to, update is supposed to hit in December. Um, among the new legendary Pokemon is Mew and Mewtwo. Very nice. Um, which uh, Mewtwo did appear in one of the original Pokemon Go videos. Uh, so, that's huge. Pokemon battles uh, with player versus player battles, player player training, yeah, the, the, um, the adding thing some is... some raise feature, which I don't even think that's in Pokemon. At least not in my memory. Maybe it's in some of the newer games that you raise yeah. Pokemon. You know, you can hatch eggs and stuff. So yeah. breeding and stuff. So yeah. Who knows what's going on with all that? But oh, um, obviously, Pokemon fans are more up to date than yeah, me now. Yeah. They're uh, probably all yelling at us right now. Like, like, how do you guys not know? This sounds like the game I want. Yeah, definitely. It does sound like it's going to be something that's huge. So, yeah. are you finally sold on Pokemon Go? If this comes out, yeah, if definitely. This is true. Yeah, if if it. It's got the player versus player and stuff like that, and actually being able to trade, so it's not ridiculously hard to get so your Pokemon. So you're telling me is, we're going to be going out for one of our podcast episodes, catching Pokemon at Irvine Park in the snow, with oh. someone else recording video of us being idiots. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> we're going to be idiots playing Pokemon Go. Because if this is all true, this guy here is sold on Pokemon Go when he really wasn't that excited about it not too long ago. No. You like the concept, but yeah. it felt like it was it, missing stuff. It, it's definitely missing stuff. And this seems to add a lot of the stuff that it seemed to be missing. Especially the whole fact that it's going to be easier now to actually, quote unquote, easier now to actually be able to. I'll trade you all my extra rat hat. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I don't need yeah. that. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. You know, actually be able to get your full fledged Pokemons because now being this able to trade is, this player to players. Um, this is what Pokemon Go should have been at launch. Um, it's hard to say that they launched Pokemon Go too soon because it's still one of the most popular apps out there. So right. they, they clearly they got hit on something, right? It just would have been nice if this was what it was. But again, we're not even. What is it? Is it, even, is it even six months since the game came out that we're getting this massive update, supposedly? I, you no, know, I'm not even sure what when it came out. I mean, out. Uh, I, I, I think it came in the middle of summer. Maybe it came at the end of summer. Uh, and people are probably on us again. Yeah, right. right as, we're, as we're Googling, July 6, 2016. Okay. When it came out. So, yeah, we're not even six months away from when. Yeah, that, no. Well, it will be, I guess, officially. No, July's... The seventh month. So yeah, no, it'd be like five months. Yeah, it's only fifth, five months, and yeah, maybe five, five and a half months before this update hits. Like that to me seems like a very well supported game that's just consistently getting better. What? Apple, Apple Watch? Watch? Yeah, oh, you didn't know that? No. Yeah, yeah, it's coming to Apple Watch. <laughs> uh, it's actually Alrighty really, then. really cool because um, on the Apple Watch, at least what they showed in the thing, you have your phone in your pocket, right? The, yeah. The, 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 the thing that sucks about Pokemon Go. Um, maybe they patched this now. I don't know, but you have to have your phone out at all times to see where the Pokemon are. So, yeah. like, to know you are about to catch a Pokemon, you have to have your phone out. You have to drain the battery on your phone because the app's got to be running with the screen on. Yep. Um, the Apple Watch allowed you to put the phone in your pocket, and you would just get a buzz on your that thing. You tap on this, close. and you can actually throw Pokeballs from your watch and catch oh, Pokemon nice. without ever taking your phone out. Nice. So, like. It seemed really cool. Now, I think they might have patched it to where you can put it in your pocket and it'll buzz, you know, or vibrate. I, ho- I hope. I- I'm probably wrong on that because it was one of my things I hated about Pokemon Go is that it drained my battery so bad. If not, that's something to work on. They, they should do it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, Apple Watch, it, 
if they if that doesn't already exist in the game Apple Watch, that was actually a brilliant thing they were doing. With that. Yeah, um, yeah, it's on. So the, I was just kind of curious as to how that was going to yeah. work, but yeah, yeah, explaining that way, yeah, that, that definitely yeah. makes sense. So I'm excited. You're excited. <laughs> I, I I think I'm almost more excited for this than Sun and Moon. But again, yeah. But again, I haven't played Sun and Moon, so it's yeah, like right? yeah. It's like everyone keeps telling me it's like the greatest Pokemon game since Red and Blue, and I'm like, but stars might exist. If I'm going to jump in, it's going to be on Switch. And yeah, but you're a Nintendo. I almost boy, so. bought, I almost bought Moon today. Did you? I'm not even kidding. If yeah. they, if it had just been even like five dollars off, I would have bought it. Yeah. It's not because it just came out. So right. that's games right. just come out or never on sale on Black Friday unless they're used copies. And of course, they don't have any used copies of Sun and Moon. It just came out. No one sold it. Right. Wow. Well, but uh, yeah, I think. I might have to finally just bite the bullet, buy my copy of NBA 2K17 that I have rented out from Gamefly. It's only going to cost like 25 bucks to keep it. Yep. And then just rent Moon and then probably end up buying it because I'm going to love it so much. <laughs> right. Uh, I think it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but anyways, that's going to do it for this week's episode yeah. of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, ben kind of was a little up and down. He's had a little down period. Like I almost felt like I was betraying my fandom. Yeah. But we bounced back with some Pokemon Go. Yep. I don't know how that happened. It just yeah. popped in my It wasn't even one of our topics today. Yeah, right. Um, so stay tuned next week. We might have chairs, and like, we'll <laughs> see what happens with chairs come if Whoa. this whole setup gets better. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the audio is great. If there's issues with it, we will try to clean it up next week. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Nintendo Prime, and I am Nate, and this is... Some asshole. Senior <laughs> Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We will catch you guys next week. Be sure to submit your fan topics below in the comments. Yep. Adios.